What is up, turtles? Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. Today we're going to be taking a look at the RB3 knife by Essie Knives, and it's in their Camp Lore line. And usually when I do a knife video, I have already used the knife a decent amount before I present it to you on camera, but I want to do something different today. I haven't used this knife at all. You know, I looked at it when I first got it because it came out in early uh, last year, but I want to use it for the first time today on camera and then get some feedback, give you some feedback with, you know, how it fared. But here's a knife. Like I said, it's in their Camp Lore line. You can see why. This really doesn't look like a normal SE knife. And the first thing that jumps out is because of the Scandi grind. And you can get this knife for right around $100 online. Looking at the blade specifically now. The three and a half inch blade, like I already mentioned, features a Scandi grind. Stone wash finish on this 1095 high carbon steel. And I really like the way that stone wash looks. Nice sharp spine, a very sharp spine. 90 degree spine on this knife. Sharpening choil down here, which you normally don't see on Scandies. I definitely appreciate that. Moving down to the handle. Removable micarta scales. They have a nice coarse texture, which I like, just increases grip. We'll see how that fares when I start using it in this humid weather today. And it's rounded. You can kind of see the contours coming up here. And let me show you how thick these scales are. I think this knife's really going to be a great companion. I really do. The handles feel very comfortable so far, and I'm really excited to get uh, get to testing this knife. One last thing before I show the sheath, I want to just mention the designer of this knife. It's called the RB3, RB being the initials of the designer. That's his last name right there, which I believe is pronounced Baloo, Ruben Baloo. All right, let's take a look at the sheath. So we have a nice leather sheath made in the USA, just like the knife sheaths made in the USA. Probably about, I don't know, it looks about seven, maybe eight ounces. Uh, that's weight slash thickness of this veg tan leather. Machine stitched. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but the underside of the stitching is a lot thinner than the top stitch. I don't know how that's gonna really fare, if it's gonna make a difference in time, but uh, definitely just a, a point to make out. With this combination with the knife, the sheath for the price and the pretty much unconditional lifetime warranty from Essie, so far I think it really is you know, pretty good package. Now I might do some finishing work on this sheath to make it a little bit nicer. The, you know, these edges aren't beveled. This edge here with the welt's pretty rough. So what I think I might do is do some mods to this knife and sheath, and then probably do an update video on it down the road. Got the knife on my belt now and you can see it's got a, or it rides pretty low, which is pretty nice right here, you know, top of my pants. This is pretty much where I like all my knives to sit unless I'm using a dangler. I'm gonna do a paper test right now just to see how sharp this knife comes from the factory. I have some newspaper type weight paper and I'm not gonna do too many paper cuts because I don't wanna really dull the edge. But what I'm gonna do is really just draw the length of the edge through the paper to see if there's any hiccups, anything like that, which I think is more important than just slice in a whole bunch through paper to see how sharp it is. I'm gonna start down here and just kind of work my way towards the tip. It's pretty darn sharp, guys and gals. No hiccups at all. I don't know if I mentioned it previously, but the thickness of this knife is 1 8 inch. No surprise it's slicing like this. Yeah, I think this thing's gonna be real fun to use on wood. First up, let's do some feather sticking. You know, first time putting this knife to wood. Man, that thing wants to bite.
So it definitely took a, took about a minute to get the feel for the knife. The outside of the sword was a little bit wet, so I really wasn't getting the curls I wanted to, but you know, as I kept using it, basically I had to almost work against the knife because it just wanted to dig. Even with the lightest pressure I was putting, putting on the knife and trying to get really thin curls, it just wanted to keep biting deeper and deeper. So I had to really focus on keeping the knife sort of at a consistent angle. So yeah, not too bad at feather sticking at all. Actually, it did really well once I got the angle and feel for the edge geometry. But what I want to do now is try to light this on fire using a ferro rod and the spine of the knife. <laughs> well, there you go. That was a fine curl. Now I just want to do some light batoning with this and sort of make some, well, you'll see what I want to do. Just having fun. That thing bites. Just making kindling for a small fire. Worked well. So what I want to do now is just get a better feel for the knife in my hand. Sort of how it, I guess, uh, just feels in the hand by doing a little bit more concentrated carving. I could try to baton this down a little bit more, but I'll use the knife and just do a bunch of power cuts to thin this down, just again to see how comfortable the handle feels. And uh, yeah, let's do it. This is tulip poplar. It's a really soft wood, but it's behaving exactly like I thought it would. Just completely, just bites in there with really no effort. Once I cant that knife a little bit like this to the wood, it just slices that much better as opposed to going straight. You can really get a good feel for a knife when you try to do like a really big face cut, a really flat surface. So what I want to do now is just try to smooth this face of this wood out now. I'm gonna keep going on this side just to get, uh, try to get all the pith out of there. Might have shot myself in the foot and gone too deep on this side. So what I'm doing here, I would consider an advanced cut. And if you're a beginner, the rule of thumb is don't ever bring the cutting edge towards your body. But what's making this safe is I'm keeping my elbows very tight to my body. And basically what that does is just decreases the range of motion that the tool is going to be in my hand. So I'm not really in jeopardy of coming into myself because it's the way I'm keeping the knife angled. And it is safe as long as you keep 
There's a few things in mind, keeping the elbow tight and sort of keeping the knife tilted away from you. But if you're looking for some actual carving videos or series, Ben Orford has a great series on his channel. Uh, Robin Wood has some pretty good YouTube videos up as well. All right, I'm calling that good. But since we're down here, let's take a look at this knife handle. See how much darker it is? That's the sweat from my hand where I'm holding it. And really it just gets almost more grippy, more grip to it when there is a little bit of moisture on this micarta. There's really no discomfort doing a cut like this, put my thumb on this sharpened spine. It's really not that big an issue. I really don't feel like digging into my thumb at all. Maybe 10 hours of doing this it would, but I don't know how long I've been doing this, maybe 20 minutes. All right, let's get the paper back out and see how this knife edge held up to these. I mean, that's pretty good, fellas and gals. Still nice and sharp. And I was trying to use the whole blade length when I was doing these cutting tasks just to get even, even wear on the edge. But uh, yeah, so far, so good, really good. Seems to be a really good heat treat on this 1095, and I would expect that from SE. They have a great reputation for quality. Well, this RB3 performed pretty much exactly how I thought it was going to. That edge, that scandy edge on this knife just bites so deep, which is a characteristic of scandies in general, and that's why a lot of people have been asking SE for a while now, make your camp lore, or make a knife with a scandy grind, you know, give us knives with scandy grinds and they have like i said this knife came out the end of last year i think october around that time so it's been out for a while but i've been very pleased and i guess impressed with se being known as more of a survival knife company uh, to put out a line like this there's more weight to the knife than it might seem which is you know kind of nice that gives almost a, a durability feel and a utility feel than just a really light carver but it carves super well. So in closing, I think this is a really good knife with the sheath around $100, including the basically unconditional lifetime warranty with Essie. This RB3 really makes a good companion knife and specifically for, for woodworking. So if you have this knife, what do you think about it? I mentioned earlier that I might do some mods to the sheath, maybe dye it. I'm gonna definitely clean up the edges and do some stuff like that. So if you have any ideas of putting maybe a forced patina on the knife, um, should I dye the sheath, whatever, just give me some ideas or if you have any, let me know what you think I should do. So if you like the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give my brother and I a thumbs up, it really helps us. And tentatively right now, our upload schedule is going to be Sunday and Tuesday. If we're feeling ambitious, there will be a video on Thursday. All right, till the next video, this is Crick with Black Owl Outdoors. Enjoy the forest, turtles.